A 26-year-old female presents to the clinic for her second visit. An ultrasound is done to assess fetal growth and development. What is the approximate fundal height at 20 weeks? A. The fundal height is approximately at the symphysis pubis. B. The fundal height is halfway between the symphysis pubis and the umbilicus. C. The fundal height is approximately at the umbilicus. D. The fundal height is halfway between the umbilicus and the xiphoid process. The correct answer is C. The fundal height is approximately at the umbilicus. Explanation. Measuring fundal height is used to evaluate fetal growth and estimate gestational age. It is measured from the pubic symphysis to the top of the mother's uterus. At 36 weeks, the fundus of the uterus is at the mother's xiphoid process. C represents the fundal height at 20 weeks. Question. A prima gravida female of average weight asks how much weight she is expected to gain during her pregnancy. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A, 25 to 35 pounds. B, 30 to 40 pounds. C, 15 to 20 pounds. D, due to differences in metabolic rate, this cannot be predicted. The correct answer is A, 25 to 35 pounds. Explanation. During the first three months of pregnancy, it is acceptable to gain between 2 to 4 pounds per week and about 1 pound per week later during the pregnancy. This may vary somewhat depending on the mother's pre-pregnancy weight. Mothers who are having twins will typically gain more. Question. A 31-year-old prima gravida female who has been smoking since the age of 16 presents to the clinic. She asks about the risk of smoking tobacco during pregnancy. The nurse correctly answers, select all that apply. A. Down syndrome. B. Low birth weight. C. Increased birth defects. D. Cretinism. The correct answer is B. Low birth weight and C, increased birth defects. Explanation. Tobacco use and smoking tobacco should be avoided during pregnancy. Tobacco smoking can result in low birth weight and increased rates of birth defects. Other substances that should be avoided include alcohol and illicit drugs. Medications may be taken but should be prescribed by a healthcare provider or a healthcare provider should be consulted before use. Question. A prima gravid female presents to the clinic for patient education. Why is a diet high in folic acid important during pregnancy? A. To prevent limb defects and gestational diabetes. B. To prevent mental retardation. C. To prevent neural tube defects and cleft deformities. D. To prevent sickle cell anemia and thalassemia. The correct answer is C to prevent neural tube defects and cleft deformities. Explanation. The benefits of supplemental folic acid in pregnancy are well documented. Folic acid during pregnancy is important and adequate intake helps prevent neural tube defects and cleft deformities. Many healthcare providers recommend 0.4 milligrams of folic acid daily starting before conception. Question. The nursing student observes a multipara female undergoing an abdominal ultrasound. What are the steps in measuring fundal height? Select all that apply. A. Put the patient in Fowler's position. B. Place the tape measure at the symphysis pubis. C. Pull the tape to the top of the fundus. D. Record the measured height. The correct answer is B. Place the tape measure at the symphysis pubis. C. Pull the tape to the top of the fundus. D. Record the measured length. Explanation. To measure the fundal height, you use a simple, flexible tape measure. Place one end at the pubic symphysis, palpable region, and the other at the top of the uterus or fundus. Measure the height in centimeters. This is a way to assess fetal growth and gestational age. Question. The UAP is assisting with positioning a patient who is 38 weeks pregnant. 
What is the best way to avoid vena cava compression in the late stages of pregnancy? A. Place the patient supine. B. Place the patient prone. C. Place the patient in low Fowler's position. D. Place the patient in a lateral lying position. The correct answer is D. Place the patient in a lateral lying position. Explanation. In vena cava syndrome, the large vein returning blood to the heart is compressed by the large uterus in pregnancy. The mother may experience symptoms that include dizziness, nausea, tachycardia, and shortness of breath. Avoiding supine position later in pregnancy is one way to avoid inferior vena cava syndrome. Question. The nurse is assessing a prima gravid patient at her first office visit. What is Nagel's rule? Select all that apply. A. A method for determining the date of the fetal lung maturity. B. Subtract three months and add seven days to the first day of the last menstrual period, then add one year. C. Add seven days to the first day of the last menstrual period and count forward nine months. D. A method for calculating the date of delivery. The correct answer is B. Subtract three months and add seven days to the first day of the last menstrual period, then add one year. C. Add seven days to the first day of the last menstrual period and count forward nine months. B. A method for calculating the date of delivery. Explanation. The Nagel's rule is used to calculate the due date. Using a mathematical formula, we can estimate the delivery date. It should be considered a guideline and not a definite due date. Question. The UAP is assisting with care on the labor and delivery floor. The nurse is reviewing medical terminology with the UAP. What does prima gravida mean? A. It describes the first trimester. B. It describes a woman who is pregnant for the first time. C. It describes the first abortion or miscarriage. D. It describes a woman who is lactating. The correct answer is B. It describes a woman who is pregnant for the first time. Explanation. This question tests whether the nursing student understands the terminology. Prima gravida refers to a woman who has been pregnant once. It is distinguished from the term prima para that refers to a woman who has carried a pregnancy to 20 weeks. A nurse is teaching a nursing student about the fetal assessment. What is a non-stress test? A. A test to evaluate fetal well-being. B. A test to evaluate fetal heart rate. C. Amniocentesis. D. The Fern Test. The correct answer is A. A test to evaluate fetal well-being. And B. A test to evaluate fetal heart rate. Explanation. A non-stress test may be done during pregnancy to evaluate the condition of the fetus. It is referred to as a non-stress test because it doesn't place any stress on the fetus. During a non-stress test that takes about 20 minutes, the healthcare provider may assess the baby's heartbeat and the mother's contractions. You would expect the baby's heart rate to increase when the mother is moving or waking. Question. The nursing student is assessing a multipara female. Define the acronym GPATL. Select all that apply. A. P. Pregnancies. B. L. Length of menstrual cycle. C. P. Preterm births. L. Living children. The correct answer is C. P. Preterm births. And C. L. Living children. Explanation. GPATL is an acronym that stands for Gravida, Preterm Births, Abortions, Term Births, and Living Children. It allows a straightforward way to record the obstetric history of a woman. There are a number of physiological changes that occur in pregnancy. The cardiovascular system is affected by changes in blood volume and increases in plasma volume. There is a physiological anemia, and this is due to the fact that the plasma volume increases more than the red blood cell production. Remember that as the uterus enlarges, the diaphragm will be elevated upward. Aside from that, 
the heart size increases. Changes that we see in the skin in pregnancy occur because of the increase in melanocyte-stimulating hormone production. This leads to hyperpigmentation. Dark streaks may be seen in the midline of the abdomen. A mask of pregnancy may be noted. This appears with an increase in dark brown coloration in the forehead, cheeks, and on the nose. One may also notice spider nevi occurring on the arms, legs, and chest. Changes that affect the respiratory system include an increase in oxygen consumption. There is an increase in oxygen consumption of approximately 20%. The diaphragm is elevated because of the enlarged uterus. The minute ventilation increases in pregnancy. This often leads to an increase in PaO2 and a decrease in PCO2. The gastrointestinal system is significantly affected during pregnancy. Nausea and vomiting occur, and this is often affected by an increase in human chorionic gonadotropin. However, this typically subsides by the third month of pregnancy. Sometimes this results in a decreased appetite due to decrease in gastric motility. Constipation increases in pregnancy, as well as flatus and heartburn. Hemorrhoids may be increased due to an increase in venous pressure. The endocrine system is affected during pregnancy. This results in an increase in basal metabolic rate and metabolic function. An increase in prolactin secretion is noted from the anterior pituitary, and this will affect the lactation process. The posterior lobe of the pituitary will produce an increase in oxytocin, and this will emulate uterine contraction. There is an increase in thyroid function and thyroid activity. Additionally, water retention occurs, secondary to an increase in aldosterone. 